Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the STMCA podcast. I'm one of your hosts, David Kromp. I'm MD2. And I'm Craig Thomas. I'm MD3. So today what we're going to talk about is another drug in your EMS toolkit. We're going to talk about Narcan, probably one of the most frequently used drugs. And even though it's very affordable and cost effective, we use it so much that it really accumulates. So I figured it's a good topic to talk about. Uh, it's got a lot of, I mean, it's got really its main use, but there's a couple of other times that we use it. We're all familiar with using it in the overdose situation. Um, but there's a lot of different ways to give it. There's a lot of different dosages. And now, Craig, I'd always heard 0.4 to 2 milligrams was the book dosage that I got. Um, I know Jamie Barish likes, she used to always come up and go two and two. She wanted two in the nose. She wanted two through an IV or IM. What are, what are your thoughts? What do you do? Yeah, I think, I mean, the two and two method is definitely applicable, especially if you're worried about a life-threatening situation. You come upon somebody, there's a high index of suspicion for opiate use, and uh, their life is threatened. You know, like they're not breathing at all. Uh, they're cool to the touch. You can still feel a pulse. Um, but they're really out of it. I think you're, you want to err on the side of a higher dose there. And I think a two intranasal, two IV, once you get it established, is very reasonable because you want them to wake up. You want to make sure that there's not other drugs on board uh, in order to save their life. Now, if you really want somebody to go from, you know, they're, they're a little bradypneic, uh, maybe they're a little bit altered, you think that there's uh, opiates on board, then I would do a lower dose. You know, that's when you're talking about the point four. you know, I just gave fentanyl to one of my patients in the ED. He became a little hypoxic just because he was breathing a little slower. Sure. So we just gave him a little point four, let him breathe a little bit easier, but it's still let the opiates work the way we wanted them to. And bradypnea for our viewers or listeners who may not hear it as often, because we usually hear tachypnea, bradypnea is a slower respiratory rate, kind of like bradycardia. Um, so yeah, I, I do the same thing. I, I, and even in some overdoses, if I have an overdose that's breathing, but is kind of tired or altered that we pick up in the streets, I prefer to give a smaller dose of Narcan. You give two milligrams of Narcan, you've suddenly taken away their high and usually come back pretty upset. I don't have any problem letting these patients sleep it off in the emergency department until we get a chance to figure out if there was anything else they ingested, get an alcohol level and a Tylenol level and all of that. Um, I certainly don't mind when a patient is brought in after receiving a large dose of Narcan either, because I know that that's a life-saving intervention, you know? Um, but so speaking of, of routes, one of the questions I, I got and got kind of frequently, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but I've had patients come in and it's amazing. I've had people tell me, oh, IV Narcan works so much better. And this patient got six milligrams of intranasal Narcan before we got an IV. And then the two milligrams IV worked like a charm. And so I ended up looking this up. And what I found was intranasal Narcan takes 8 to 13 minutes to take effect. IM, like through the muscle, takes 2 to 5, and IV takes 1 to 2 because it's delivered right away. Um, so what we're finding is, you know, you give you give that 2 milligrams intranasal, and, and you should hopefully be bagging the whole time if they're not breathing. But, you know, 8 to 13 minutes is a long time to wait and bag, and it feels like forever. So I think we're seeing a lot of redosing in the nasal Narcan, and then you get an IV and you push your IV Narcan, and all of a sudden they come right back because uh, it hits the CNS faster. Um, but I, again, Narcan is one of those readily available drugs. It's safe to give. Uh, it's everywhere. I mean, even people not in the medical field can pick it up at a pharmacy for free. And I let all of our overdoses know that. I let their family know that. Um, some places have leave behind kits for Narcan, which has really improved, you know, resuscitation and yeah. And we're starting to do that here at the STMCA. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a great idea. Um, but I, I really don't have too much more to say about Narcan. It's kind of straightforward. I'd say, give it, if you have a patient who's not super far gone, I think it's reasonable to give a lower dose, but otherwise, if you have to, you can go two and two. Yeah, and if you ever are altered, you have an altered patient, I mean, hypoglycemia and opiates are kind of the two most common things. So if you knock those two things out and if they don't have a reaction, you can feel a little bit more confident it's not an opiate that's causing your issue. Um, the other thing that I just want to touch on, uh, especially because I think it's very important, the timing of the route of administration like you talked about, is not only is that education for you guys, I mean, I think everybody... Uh, 
around the STMCA is aware of that intranasal Narcan takes a little bit of time, but you know, there are other agencies, maybe police or even those people we do live, uh, the leave behind kits for. It's important that you guys are the ones educating the community as well uh, and other providers that might be carrying Narcan, you know, fire and police. That way they know uh, it's not gonna be immediate and we really need to make sure that we're assisting ventilations in that interim time. Uh, so hopefully this information allows you guys to be better better educators as well. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. And and as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. See you in the next podcast.